I've searched many years on end. There was none that my soul could depend. My soul cries out. For your presence in here, this very hour. For your presence in here, in His name I find, in His name I find, in His name I. My soul could depend. My soul cries out for your presence in here. This very hour, for your presence. Waiting for the kingdom come.
Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Rudy here. Welcome to our Next Gen Online Experience. We have pre-recorded this content. Wherever you are, we are so thankful that you can make it. We encourage you to grab your Bible, prepare your heart, and get ready to receive the Word from God. And I look forward to seeing you online in just a moment. Take two. <sighs> Let's go. Hey, Johar, what's up, man? Hey, Gavin. How you doing? Good. How you doing, bro? Yep, good. How about you? Hey, I, I actually, yeah, I'm actually good, though. You want to see a magic trick? Sure. Uh, I, I'm going to show you something, though. It's basically this, uh, it's just a card thing, you know, I'm standing. So, all I need you to do is just to remember your card, and which is the yeah, mm. ten of hearts, okay? I'm going to entirely put it uh, lost into the deck. I'm going to take your card and put it right where in the middle, randomly. Push it in slowly as you see it vanishes. Now your card in this point will be completely lost in the deck. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to take the one cut of the deck. And I'm going to put it back and cut even deeper. Put it right here. I'm going to put on, a, uh, on the original deck, you know. And what I wanted to do is just basically to slide out the deck. And you see there is one card after the face up uh, point. Which is... Oh, card. awesome. Hello, welcome Hello. to our podcast. My name is Billy. My name is Toby. And you are watching podcast Toby and Billy. Yeah, hey. what's up, guys? Good morning. Welcome back to 180 Next Gen Sunday Service. How are you guys feeling, man? Good. I hope I hope you guys are feeling well. First of all, we would like to say hi to those who are right now watching the stream right now. Like uh, my dude, Billy gives high you know yeah and we would like all we would like to also welcome you guys for the first time who join us here in next gen 180 service we hope that uh, we could praise God um, and have a great time together well yeah yeah uh, let us read from Philippians 4 verse 13 I can do all things through him who strengthens me let this first remind us that he always give us new strength every day so that we could stand firm in this uncertain situation for God is able and nothing is impossible so guys before we start our service let us pray God we want to thank you Lord for today that you've still given us a chance to live and to breathe it's all because of your grace God Lord we want to pray Lord for the coronavirus cases that keeps on rising in the state of Victoria. Lord, we want to ask that you would intervene and stop this virus from spreading in our community, Lord. And God, I just want just to pray, Lord, for the current restrictions that have been put in place in the state of Victoria, Lord. I pray, God, for those people who are feeling frustrated, isolated, lonely, stressed, depressed. God, I pray and I ask for you, Lord, to reveal yourself into them, God. I pray, God, let hope arise and speak hope into their lives, Lord. I pray, God, that they would see you and encounter you in this time of season, God. Know that you are a God of hope, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the businesses that are um, on the edge of bankruptcy, Lord. God, we just wanna just wanna ask Lord for your favor, Lord, upon those businesses, God. Pray for strength, pray for wisdom, pray for creativity, Lord. I pray God that you would help them in however it is, Lord, so that they can survive, Lord. I pray, Lord, um, for those who are currently infected with the virus, Lord those who are um, struggling to breathe, God. Lord, I just want to pray and ask, Lord, that you would show yourself, Lord, that you would heal them, Lord, that you would show your power, God, in their lives, Lord, that they may see you, Lord, that they may know you, Jesus. And Father, we just want to thank you, God. I believe, Lord, that you are still working, Lord, this time, God. Yeah, you were working to make everything, to work everything together for good, Lord. 
And Father, we just want to thank you, God, that you are still faithful, Lord. I pray, God, that you would draw us closer and closer to you even more in this season, God, that we may know what's in your heart, Lord. We may know what you want um, us to do in this season, Lord. And Father, I pray, God, that you would raise up your children, Lord, to be the light, Lord, to be the hope, God, to the world, Lord, to this the broken world, Lord. And Father, we just want to thank you, God. I pray that you bless Victoria, Lord, that you bless our Prime Minister, God, you bless our Premier as well, Lord, so that in whatever decision making that they're doing, Lord, truly it's according to your will, Lord. And we just want to thank you, God, for everything, Lord. Just want to surrender everything, God, into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shalom everyone, welcome to our online service. We are so glad that you join us today to worship the Lord together. For those of you with us for the first time, well and welcome. We are so excited to have you here today. Today, as we worship, I would like to encourage you to open your heart and put God as your focus, as He is the creator of life, He is the creator of everything, he is the reason we have breath in our lungs to live another day. Let's prepare our heart and bring our cares and our worries into His presence. Let's join in a prayer. Father God, we give thanks to You for all the good things You have done in our life. Today we declare that You are good and Your love endures forever. Fill us with Your overwhelming joy. Renew our strength refresh our soul and now we are ready to worship you lord in the name of jesus we pray amen thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus for you are great you are great god hallelujah hallelujah yes lord for you are great god there's no one like you jesus
endures forever. Hallelujah! goodness God thank you for your amazing presence in the midst of us as we prepare our heart to listen to your word we just want to say we want to draw close to you we want you more we want you more we want you more Father God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus let's worship him we want you more, we want you more, Jesus, oh, you and you alone, draw me again, into the center of your love, where I begin, I know that you
Shalom, everyone. We have uh, worship and praise the Lord together. Uh, now is the time for us to receive the word of God. Um, before we receive his word, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Let's quieten our mind and our hearts together and come to the Lord today. Father God, we come to you today. Lord, we need you. You are our Father. Jesus, you are our Shepherd. You're all that we need. We bring our lives to you today. Whatever needs that we have, Lord, you have the answer. You are El Shaddai, God who is more than enough. Today, right now, Lord, if anyone has any need, touch them. Bless them, provide them, heal them, restore them. Lord, renew them. Thank you, Lord. You are still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And right now, even today, wherever we are, Holy Spirit God, you can come and touch lives today. Make them know that you love them, that your love is still the same even today. And let us be filled with your love, abiding in your love, rooted and grounded in love. And with that, we can bear fruit for the glory of God. Bless your word and bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now today, the title of the word that I'm going to share is Together We Find Christ's Love. Now, togetherness is God's plan and God's design. God describes his church in the Bible as the body with many members. Each one of us has a different function in the body. And we need to join together. Uh, if, imagine if the hands are working alone, or the arms working alone, or the legs separated from the body and want to walk alone. 
it won't work and it would be very scary. But when the whole member of the body join together, the arm, the hand, the leg, the body, all functioning together as intended, and it's, that's a description of uh, the church of God, the body will function and can perform uh, big things, great things. And in the same way, if we all as a body of Christ are together, knitted together, joined together in the love of Christ, and we function together, then we can do great things for the kingdom of God. Uh, piles of stones, if they are just uh, dumped uh, on the ground, they become rubbles. But if the stone are arranged together, built up together, it becomes the house of God. And we are the stone that will be built together to make up the house of God. The Bible says about the church as an army of God. It's not just individual uh, soldier, but it's an army. As a family, it's not just a people who stay together in one place, but a family who care for one another, who love for one another, who uh, support one another as a family. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 until 12, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. There is a warmth, the love of God when we are together. But how can one keep warm alone? God doesn't want you to be alone. God wants you to stay in the family and the community of God. And though one may be overpowered, one can be defeated, two can defend themselves, and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Hallelujah. Two are better than one. Uh, is it really? Well, I have a friend who say, I do not want to work with that person because if I work with him, it will become slower. Uh, he will slow me down because he will ask questions, he is uh, disrupting my job and so on. So two may not be better than one if the two people don't care for each other, or they are not balanced, or they are uh, the two people who are seeking their own interest, and maybe one try to utilize the other for his or her own good intent, yeah, for uh, the selfish purpose. And, you know, uh, the two will not become better if they are not united in love. But when two people are together, united together with one purpose and one heart, something great can happen. Now, there's a story about Jonathan and his armor bearer. You know, in the first uh, Samuel chapter 14, verse 6, yeah, at that time, Jonathan and his armor bearer with the whole Israel facing the enemy. And then uh, Jonathan uh, went out with his uh, young man, his uh, armor bearer. And then uh, he said in uh, 1 Samuel 14 verse 6, Come, let us go over to the uh, garrison of the enemy. It may be that the Lord will work with us, will work for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. Basically, Jonathan said, if God with us, whether we are many or we are few, doesn't matter. Because God will overcome, will defeat our enemies. And then his armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. Do as you wish. Behold, I am with you heart 
and soul. Praise the Lord. His armor bearer basically, I'll go with you all the way, life or death. I will work with you. I will fight with you. Hallelujah. And with this kind of unity, two are better than one. Because two, uh, they will have a good return for their labor. If either one of them fall, then the other one can help them up. Praise the Lord. God wants us to be together. And as we are together, and God wants us to find the love of Christ. God wants us to experience His love. And God wants us to find Him. And as we find uh, Christ and abide in His love, and we, He in us and we in Him, then we will bear much fruit for the glory of God. Now, how can we find Christ's love in our togetherness? Yeah. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, the word of God says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, in the name of Jesus, there am I among them. Where two or three gather together in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord, and we are coming together to worship the Lord together, you know, God's presence is there. And when God is there, His love is there. And He can fill you with His love. He can touch you with His love. He can fill your life with His presence. And the Bible talks about worshiping together. Sometimes we can worship the Lord alone. We can sing to the Lord alone. We can praise the Lord alone. We can pray to the Lord alone. But something happens when we come together as a family as a congregation in the corporate worship. Psalm chapter 34, verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. David says, It's great for me to praise the Lord, but I want you also to praise the Lord with me. I want you also to exalt God with me, and let us together exalt his name together. Shall we do it now? Oh Lord, we praise you. We bless your name. We exalt your name, oh God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there is a power when we praise the Lord, and especially if not alone, and together with our family, together with Church of Christ, together praising, exalting his name, and God is enthroned upon our praises. Praise the Lord. Psalm chapter 35, verse 18, David says, I will thank you in front of the great assembly. I will praise you before all the people. We can sing to the Lord alone, individually, but it will be an uplifting environment and atmosphere when we see, when we gather together and worship the Lord together. And sometimes, you know, we are inspired when we see other people worshiping the Lord. I see uh, worship and praise the Lord earlier. We see the worship leader, we see the singers, we see the musician uh, praising the Lord. And we can be inspired by the joy in praising the Lord and how they worship God deeply and how the intercessor praying fervently. And that is like a fire that you know, uh, spread across the uh, dry woods. And that kind of enthusiasm and that kind of passion will infect us and will make us, uh, you know, bring us to pray more, to worship more, to praise more. And there's a difference when we are praising the Lord alone and when we are together. Hallelujah. So today, are you alone or are you together? Uh, look for a friend, look for a, a companion that can come. Let's exalt the name of the Lord together. Let's magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Yesterday, we had our cool uh, and we worshiped the Lord together via Zoom. Okay, we have Zoom meeting 
uh, virtual meeting and we worship the Lord together, we praise together. And, you know, normally when we say we're two or three gathered together in, uh, in God's name, it's, it's a physical meeting. And that's always great to have physical meeting. Yeah, when the church is back uh, to have a, a physical gathering, let's come back together. But while we are still separated right now with social distancing, with this COVID-19 situation, we still can be together even though it's virtual, right? And yesterday when we worshiped the Lord together, we can feel the presence of God. We can feel the touch of God. And in our place, we can feel, you know, God's presence and God's love. And also we pray fervently for a breakthrough, pray fervently for healing, and we can feel God's power even when we pray together uh, in uh, different places, but with one heart, with one uh, unity, we uh, pray and worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. You know, when we come to the Lord together, we will be refreshed, strengthened. We are renewed in God's presence. We are restored in God's presence. We are uh, we renew our strength. Our uh, we we are replenished with the new strength uh, of from God when we are in God's presence. And we can feel God's presence more when we have this a uh, gathering, like in our cool or in our homogeneous group or even in our uh, online service like what we have today. That's why in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, the Bible says, Let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. If you feel dry today, maybe you want to find a community, friends, right, family, you know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that you can say, come, let's worship together, let's pray together, let's pray for one another, let's encourage one another, and you will feel the touch of God and the love of God. Father, I pray, Lord, let no one be alone. If anyone is dry, Lord, let somebody come and touch their life and, and, and encourage the person, Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody can be strong and experience Christ's love that is beyond all understanding. So number one, in corporate worship, when we are together praising and worship the Lord, we can feel the presence of God. And number two is when we are loving and serving one another. In the Bible, right, there are many scriptures talking about one another. Pray for one another. Encourage one another. Carry each other burden. Hallelujah. Serve one another. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, God is in heaven and God is spirit and he cannot be seen. Yeah. Um, when we feel the presence of God, we can feel the touch of God. Yeah. But more often than not, God wants to work through his children through his disciples. And Jesus command, commanded his disciples that we should love one another, that we should love for one another, not just as how we feel like it. Now, today, I want to love at this much. The next day, I am not in a good mood. I have a difficulty and so on. So I love less. No, Jesus say, you should love one another as I have loved you. And as we receive the great love of God, yeah, uh, the overwhelming as a, a f flood love of God, then we can love other people. If you are dry, if you don't have enough love, how can we love other people? 
we need to be filled with God's love. But as we receive God's love and we walk in His love, then we reflect His love by loving other people, loving your brother and sisters. And we love others even to the extent as Jesus did love His disciples, love you and me. He said, no greater love than this, that a man should give his life for a friend. We receive love from others in a community. In our togetherness, we receive the love from others. We receive cares from other people. We receive a, a encouragement from other people. We receive comfort from other people. And as we grow, not only we receive, but we also want to give. As we become mature, we want to give because we know that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And then we want to care for other people. We want to carry other people's burden. We want to encourage other people. And with that, we experience God's love. We experience God's love we, as we are encouraged by other people, as if God speaks to us, but He speaks to us through another person. We receive comfort from other people as if God comfort us, but it's through our brothers and sisters. And with the same way, we want to bless other people. We want to uh, accompany those who are uh, lonely. We want to comfort those uh, who are in sorrow uh, because of discouragement or disappointment and so on. And as we do that, that's why two are better than one. Because when you are fall, when you fall, somebody can lift you up. If you are weak, somebody can strengthen you. And at the same time, when you are strong, you can carry other people's burden. God wants you, God wants us to experience His love through our togetherness in the body of Christ, from your brothers and sisters in Christ the Lord. Christ Jesus. Now experience love from one another. And that's why find the community where it suits you, whether it's a community of love, cool, cell group, or it's a homogeneous group, and so on. Don't be alone, because through this togetherness, we can feel, uh, we can experience God's love uh, that is uh, channeled through other people to us. And we also can become the channel of God's love to other people. And with that, we can find and experience Christ's love. So number one, we experience or we find Christ's love in corporate worship when we are together worshiping the Lord. And number two, when we love one another, when we serve one another, when we care for one another, when we comfort one another, we can experience Christ's love. And lastly, Christ's love is not only for us alone. Christ's love is reaching out to the lost, reaching out to the sinner, reaching out to those who are walking towards destruction, who are walking in the kingdom of darkness. And we want to bring light to them. We want to bring good news to them. We want to bring God's love for them, that they will experience God's love as we have experienced. You know, the heart of Jesus is always for the lost. He say, as a shepherd leaving the 99 sheep, and look for the one sheep that is lost. At his agony upon the cross, there's a criminal next to Jesus, and he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied him, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. That man may be has a broken life all you know, his life such that 
he deserve you know crucifixion punishment maybe his life is really bad but jesus loves him and when he comes to the lord and he asks god jesus remember me when you come to your kingdom jesus out of his love save him and he say today you will be with me in paradise if we have god's love in our hearts we will have compassion for the lost and as we experience the love of god in our togetherness in the body of christ we also want to extend that love to the world around us god wants us to go out together as one army of christ to defeat the kingdom of darkness and bring the kingdom of god to come and the will of god to be done on earth as it is in heaven and you, know, you may go out alone and try to reach out somebody but maybe it's better if you have somebody someone else accompanying with you it's like paul when he went out with barnabas he went uh, after that he went out with silas and barnabas went out with john mark they knew that going out together is better than doing it alone like jesus sending his disciple two by two and god wants us to work together as one body you know uh, maybe one person has a gift of uh, uh, leading another one another one has a gift of exhortation another one have a gift of serving another one may have a gift of caring and then together they serve one person that need jesus and that person can find jesus because this group of people have with the love of god bring the good news bring the love of god and share the love of christ to this person you remember the four person that bring the paralytics to jesus let's do it together let's bring the love of god together to those who need the lord to those who are lost and as we share the love of christ we will receive more of his love and we will experience more and it's always amazing to see someone receive jesus as his lord and savior and born again and get saved it's always the greatest miracle and perhaps we can do more when we are doing this work together with our brothers and sisters now um, i want to share a testimony uh, one of our cool member uh, was having a difficult situation uh, early in this year or maybe last year uh, things didn't work out for her and she had a heartbreaking situation and she was withdrawing herself from the cool we tried to invite her uh, but she didn't feel like coming uh, to the fellowship and uh, this is what she wrote you know i was already in the cool but at the time i didn't feel like going to cool meetings after rejecting lots of cool meeting invitation one day i decided to come and then everyone in the cool and the cell group meeting prayed for me and i felt i got some strength back after that meeting after the time i really experienced how this word of god is truly happening to me he she quoted from psalm 40 verse 2 he lifted me out of the pit of despair out of the mud and the mire he set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as i walk along wow she felt like she's being lifted up out of the pit of despair out of mud out of mire and then she can carry on uh, saying that the cool friends keep praying for me even until now we pray for each other 
and I'm grateful to God to let me have them in my life. Glory to God that he does not let my foot slip, that he watches over me, does not slumber nor sleep. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't it a great testimony? I actually asked her to share in a short video clip, but she sent this in writing instead. And I would like to encourage you today. Have you found Christ's love in your life? Maybe you have, you are safe, but you know, if you are getting dry, you should look for a community where you can join together in uh, worshiping God, praying together, praising together, giving thanks to the Lord, sharing testimony that encourage one another. And with that, you can experience God's presence and may God's presence touch your life, uh, encourage you, bring you up, giving you new hope, uh, you know, strengthen your faith. And you can see with God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. And then when you are together, you can experience like what uh, this uh, person experienced. She was in a despair. She was, you know, in a difficult situation. And then somebody come and encourage her. Somebody come and pray for her. Somebody come and uh, invite her to come back to the family, family of God. Somebody come and uh, comfort her and uh, cheer her up and accompany her. And then she is back in the family of God. If you are alone and you are weak, like the Ecclesiastes say, uh, woe is the one who fall and alone. Don't be alone today. Don't be alone and find somebody that uh, a community, a group that you can grow together. And then with that, you can experience God's love. And with that also, you can share Christ's love to the lost, those who need to hear the name of Jesus, those who need to experience God's love. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Father, I pray, Lord, today that no one in the family of God, in the church of God, is alone. Lord, the world can be very challenging, very difficult for us. The devil is always prowling around, Lord. But as we are together, where two or three gather together in your name, you are there with us. And we share our life with one another, strengthen one another, encourage one another, build up one another, serve one another, pray for one another, believing for one another. Oh, it's like the uh, Jonathan uh, uh, and his armor bearer together and they do great things. Father, I pray, Lord, unite each and every one of us to the body of Christ as a member to the body, as a stone to the uh, a building, as a family member to the family of God. And in that we find Christ's love and we are uh, growing together to become, to uh, bear fruit for your glory. Bless everyone today. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Selamat hari Minggu. Saya percaya kita masuk dalam level kemuliaan yang lebih besar lagi. Pada edisi Voice of Pentecost kali ini, kita akan membahas faith and risk atau iman dan resiko. Berapa banyak saudara yang mau hidup tanpa resiko? Berbisnis tanpa resiko, menikah tanpa resiko, atau untuk yang anak muda, pacaran tanpa resiko sakit hati. Apa sih resiko itu? Resiko adalah sesuatu yang buruk, yang tidak sesuai dengan harapan kita, tetapi rasanya tidak mungkin kita hidup tanpa resiko. Karena dunia yang kita kenal hari ini adalah dunia yang telah dirusakan oleh dosa. 
Kejadian 8 ayat 22 mengatakan, selama bumi masih ada, takkan berhenti-henti musim menabur dan menuai, dingin dan panas, kemarau dan hujan, siang dan malam. Oleh sebab itu, selama bumi masih ada, maka yang namanya resiko akan terus ada. Lalu bagaimana kita mengatasi hal ini? Dengan memiliki iman. Terkadang hidup ini seperti seorang pengusaha yang sedang berinvestasi. Dan yang namanya investasi tentu ada segudang resiko. Seperti beberapa faktor berikut. Yang pertama, faktor waktu. Kita bisa menghitung, tetapi tidak bisa menentukan dengan pasti kapan investasi kita akan menghasilkan profit yang baik. Dalam hidup ini, kita juga tidak pernah bisa memastikan waktu. Tapi yang pasti, Tuhan selalu tepat waktu. Yang kedua, faktor karakter. Kepada siapa kita menginvestasikan uang kita, akan sangat berpengaruh pada besar kecilnya resiko yang akan kita terima. Tetapi apabila kita menginvestasikan hidup kita pada Tuhan, kita tahu dia adalah pribadi yang sangat dapat dipercayai, bahkan mengasihi kita. Yang ketiga, faktor tak terduga. Sejeli apapun kita mengelola semua resiko dalam investasi, tetap saja ada resiko yang tidak dapat kita duga. Seperti halnya tahun 2020 ini. Banyak hal yang tidak kita ketahui dan mengejutkan. Tetapi Tuhan tahu, maka dari itu memiliki iman menjadi sangat penting. Sama halnya dengan investasi yang memiliki segudang resiko. Hidup kita hari ini juga dipenuhi dengan resiko dan bahaya. Tetapi memiliki iman dan menginvestasikannya kepada Tuhan menjadi hal yang sangat penting pada titik ini. Karena ketika kita memiliki iman, ada tiga hal yang akan kita alami. Dengan iman kita mendapatkan kepastian janji-janji Allah. Dengan iman kita mendapatkan perkenanan Allah. Dengan iman kita memperluas kerajaan Allah di bumi. Seperti yang Ibrani 11 ayat 6 katakan. Tetapi tanpa iman tidak mungkin orang berkenan kepada Allah. Sebab barang siapa berpaling kepada Allah, ia harus percaya bahwa Allah ada. Dan bahwa Allah memberi upah kepada orang yang sungguh-sungguh mencari dia. Resiko akan selalu ada dan tidak bisa kita hindari di dalam dunia yang telah dirusakkan oleh dosa ini. Tetapi kita orang Pentakosta tidaklah harus menjadi takut akan hal ini. Melainkan mempergunakan iman untuk dapat mengelola setiap resiko yang ada dalam kehidupan. Ini masa-masa yang penting untuk menguatkan kembali kepercayaan kita kepada Tuhan. Karena dia sangat dapat dipercayai. Dan ketika kita berhasil mengelola semua resiko itu dengan iman, maka kita akan memperoleh profit yaitu janji dan perkenanan Tuhan. Maka sebagai orang Pentakosta, hari ini jangan ragu untuk menginvestasikan iman dan seluruh kehidupan kita kepada Tuhan Yesus Kristus. Tuhan memberkati. Let's find and experience God's love. In corporate worship, loving and serving others, loving the lost. Thank you, Pastor Nico, for sharing the Word of God today. If this is the first time you join with us and you want to connect with us, please click the link in the chat box. And if you need prayer, we believe in the power of prayer. Please click the prayers link in the chat box too. Now, let's get ready to receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. See you again next week. Now let's watch the ice cream. Please note that there will be Holy Communion during next week's online Sunday service, 16 of August 2020. Therefore, please make sure you prepare unleavened bread such as matzah, hosti, crackers, flatbread, and wine such as grape juice, ribena, red wine, and a small glass or cup. Those who need prayer support may submit your prayer request through the following link. www.bethanymail.org.au slash form slash prayer request and our pastoral team will contact you immediately. Ladies Fellowship Women of Impact Community 
would like invite you to join a woman revival that will be held on Friday 14 of August 2020 at 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. The session will be ministered by Rev. Cindy Jacobs and Pastor Betty Handoyo and will be streamed live on Bethany Church Singapore YouTube page. Do you have plenty of free time at home and don't know what to do? Are you looking for new skills to acquire during this quarantine season? The vessel is introducing you to Quarantive. Throughout the month of August and September, we are opening free classes for you to join. Here is the list of classes for the month of August. The classes are free to join, so simply scan the QR code to register. For more information about the upcoming class for September, please stay tuned to our Instagram page. Our weekly bulletin is still running as usual with more testimonies and articles from our congregation. Simply scan the QR code to read the latest bulletin. BKS Victoria is inviting you to join us as we pray for our country, Indonesia, during the COVID-19 lockdown. The prayer will be held through Zoom on Saturday, 20th of August 2020 at 7.30 p.m. Please enter your Zoom ID and password to join the prayer. We are inviting you to join fasting prayer that is held every Saturday from 10 a.m. through Zoom meeting. You can join the prayer by going to www.bethanymouth.org.au slash zoom slash prayer tower. You can also join and see the schedule for the other prayer tower by going to the same link. For more information, please contact them up. Offering and tithing can still be done through online transfer. If you want to make offering, please transfer it to this account on the screen. You can also make offering through tithe.ly by scanning the QR code on the screen. Thank you, Gorudi. So lastly, after the service, we would like to give a couple of heads up, uh, like announcement. So we gotta have a couple of announcements to announce. So I'm gonna give it right ahead to my boy, Toby. Thanks, Kili. Cool is running as usual on Friday. Please contact your cool leader. And if you don't have any cool, please fill the form on the description box below. Yes, correct. <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah, and also don't forget to follow us in uh, social media, uh, you know, in our Instagram. So follow us at 180 Melbourne. 180 Melbourne and be next next again. Exactly. So you know, you can also DM us a couple of little stuff about cool. You know, just hit us in the DM buttons, and we'll be right there. All right. So lastly, uh, so very sorry to tell you, it's going to be the end. But before we end it up, don't forget to like. The video and also subscribe us in YouTube so you know hit the thumbs up button so yeah I think that's all for us uh, from this podcast my name is Billy my name is Toby and see you guys next, next week bye bye, bye.